I think we're fair. I think we're a pretty good we're judge. We're fair and balanced here. I haven't had anybody are. reach out vehemently disagreeing with our opinion yeah. on any of them yet. <laughs> good point. Which is rare if you're Just like, rare. considering <laughs> that you're critiquing, overly critiquing we get notes and ranking about a lot of what we say. Yeah, but not. But no one's ever disagreed with our assessment of your faggoty little genders. <laughs> This is the Gender Fluids Podcast. I'm Ava Smart, a trans woman, lifelong faggot, and bottom-leaning switch. And I'm Ariel Isaac Norman, a gender fluid, polyamorous lesbian type. And this is the only queer podcast that isn't super gay. We're not here to educate you, but if you listen, you're going to learn something. You can follow us on Instagram at Gender Fluids Podcast. Find us on Patreon, patreon.com slash genderfluids. You can also follow me on Instagram at Ellen DeGenderless. I'm at Natalie Mars Volta on Instagram. Enjoy the episode, y'all. As we're starting the joint, I think that's a great place to start. Yeah, it's a good spot to start. Also, it's just like, whenever we usually start recording, it's like, ooh, all right, here we go, and we're in it. And this felt so mild where it's like, oh, yeah, we should turn these on, and now... <laughs> just oh. sitting just sitting here yeah i think it's good it'll, it'll take some getting used to but yeah well i guess i was gonna say for the people that can't see because oh, you, yeah. you can see now as if, if they were starting if you're not seeing us you could be <laughs> as of now as of now we're not only on spotify <laughs> apple etc but we're now on youtube mm-hmm. I'm doing video we're in a new studio mm-hmm <coughs> Fuck that block <blind>. hit me. <laughs> this is gonna be a coffee intro. <laughs> I'm gonna have to get used to not having um, a microphone in front of me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I it feel does like make I me... hide in front of it, behind it. I do like I I I did enjoy the microphone and the and the headphones because I felt like one of the good time girls from SNL. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, it helped me get into that headspace. But I think I get used to it. <laughs> yeah, this is sweaty balls. This is just gonna be a lot of sustained eye contact now, which like kind of happened. But also we were in like my little office studio thing, and so like you could always look around and there's shit all on the walls and like it was easy for my autistic self to an ADHD self to like right. look off at things to avoid well feelings. that's what I'm trying to figure out I mean I can look at the sex toys that you seem to have in a bag over there yeah or well whatnot. I think next time what we're gonna do is hang them from the background and have oh, okay. some like fuck toys hanging like some paddles and idea. gags and like anal hook type things that's a great idea yeah <laughs> just someone hanging from their nipples in the back <laughs> That'd be so good. Dude, for, for perverts, uh, I was just on the phone with uh, my friend who I like do a lot of the halftime stuff with. We're trying, speaking of somebody hanging there. Yeah, she'd do it. Uh, well, we were trying to find somebody who's into like suspension stuff, like where you like put hooks through your yeah. skin and like suspend them. And we were going <coughs> to, thinking about trying to do a bit where like <coughs> we wheel Greg Abbott out on stage and then like, <laughs> The ghost of like the, all the trans kids that have killed themselves because they couldn't get access to the health care they needed, dump him out of the chair and then like s hook him on like meat hooks and like suspend him like in the corner on stage and like write like f faggot sissy cuck on it or something like that. And mm -hmm. then just like that's the end of the halftime show. And then he just stays there for the rest of the show, just hanging there. Damn. But we're we're having to find somebody who can have meat hooks put in them and stay hanging for like 30 minutes you know yeah it's harder than you think no i would think that would be pretty hard <laughs> I, I would i would estimate that it would take some greg's listing for a couple of weeks to find that you know if we can't make that work are you on field looking for it or <laughs> this is word of mouth right now but i'm just saying you might want to turn to the internet because field craigslist i mean yeah but my fear is always like with something like that and some rando. <laughs> like, right. I need to trust you that you're not going to, like, call the cops on me afterwards, report me, or something like that. would be like, a weird call like to that. the cops. Hey, I agreed to do this comedy show where they said I would be dressed as Greg Abbott and hung, but then I didn't think they would actually do it. Like, what? what's the call? <laughs> or just, like, they were... Something goes wrong and they get injured. Uh, like, from, like, nipple doing rips it, off. Or something. Who, who knows, you know? And, like... Where it's like, is it somebody... I need I to slow down like, on this. Yeah. Fucking blunt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll come back to it. Uh -huh. 
Yeah, it's like, because, uh, you know, people have been, like, arrested and jailed and, like, sentenced for... Can't gone wrong. Yeah, all the time. Yeah, well, because if you, like... I can't remember which one's a podcast and which one's real life, or, like, a fake podcast and which one's real life about how, like, someone had told their boyfriend to, like, choke himself, you know, and then... But then, like, but she, it was, like, a remote thing, and then he wound mm-hmm. up dying... Um, yeah, and I think she, that was she gets charged, or it's just like yeah, or well, they were deciding, or like a dude one time told another dude to cut his dick off and eat it, and the dude who got his dick cut off died, and then the dude <laughs> wait he cut off his own dick and died? No, an- he had another guy cut his dick off, oh. consensually asked him to do it, yeah. and wanted him to cut his dick off so that he could then watch the guy eat it. Cuts his dick off, eats it. Dude who gets his dick cut off dies guy who eats the dick goes to jail you know oh you mean the germans yeah no i know that story but i didn't (laughs) i didn't uh i think of it as someone was telling someone the two men i think they found each other on something like craigslist but they were one of them was like i have a fantasy of someone eating my dick i have a fantasy yeah so it was like a mutual thing and they even like i think recorded videos of them saying this was consensual yeah everything and yeah it doesn't matter because yeah the guy who ate the other guy's dick who died so I think if the guy it would if the guy hadn't bled out or whatever I assume. Um, well, if no one had died, it wouldn't have mattered. Right then, I think. <laughs> no, I, I wonder if that would it still, still be considered. Illegal, it's still illegal, but you, you probably wouldn't have prosecuted it. Yeah, or like that's a fun. If you can't like, eat, I don't. I think cannibalism in general, at least in the U.S., is illegal. In Germany, it might not be. <laughs> I mean, who I feel knows? like those were Germans. If, I mean, this was. No, I think this was in the states. I don't, I feel like this is... This also is, I, I, this, hasn't only happened once. This has happened well, a no, few times. Well, no, but that was a particular thing with the dick-eating people. And the <laughs> Unless maybe that has happened a lot. <laughs> like, can we find out whether... Like, how many times? Uh, how, many, how many times is it? Okay. Man who ate penis <laughs> and... Here's the thing is when you think about it, it's like it. you kind of almost want to, like, get someone... Arm and If you're going to eat a dick. You want to get it hard. That way you can kind of like tourniquet part of it and then cut it off. Oh, I never thought about whether the so, dick was hard or soft. It was probably soft by the time you're done cutting it because of blood loss. I mean, just that's how right. It, right? But do, they st- do you start hard? Probably these people have been waiting to do this their whole lives. He's probably rock hard. Yeah. But I'm just saying to keep it hard, not have it go flaccid and all the blood leak out of it. You got to like tourniquet it for a minute and then carterize the wound side. That way, yeah. once you do that... First off, that's your first side seared if you're going to eat it. Unless you're eating it raw. I want to eat a limp dick, though, too. I want to eat it hard. I want it well, to, come, yeah, to no. keep it hard. Yeah. I feel like with as much blood and cartilage as in a dick, I don't, it's, it's if, you, could, like, you could do a kind of like blood sausage thing with it, right? Like if you boiled it for a long it's time. It's like more like, isn't it like hollow in the middle? So it's like calamari or something? No, I mean, it's not hollow. Uh-uh. It's like full of, it's like cartilage and like blood veins and like, or maybe cartilage? not cartilage. I don't know the anatomy of a dick very oh, well. Oh, gross, I'm being honest. Dude. Dicks are made of cartilage? No, we look I, some think of this I think up. it's just blood vessels maybe. Blood vessels? That get hard. But, okay, so does the, does the, the, the P2, isn't there just like, there has to be like a hole in the yeah, middle of it? Yeah, but it's such a tiny hole. I don't know. You people are sounding yourselves with. But you got to stretch it out to get there, right? Right. You know, right. It's not most like people's. It's just kind of it's like it's not a, like there's a fucking pool cue sized hole down the middle. Right. Of the dick, it's just right? kind of like a. There's a there's a path. <laughs> yes. Right. But otherwise, it's blood. Yeah. I think okay, it's okay, blood the parts vessels of the penis that are the, swells okay. up and like the tissues that make up the penis include the dorsal nerve, blood vessels, oh, connective fuck. tissue. That hey. sounds right. An erectile tissue. Yes. Shout out Justin. Also, real quick. So Justin's producing our podcast now and. We have a whole little setup where we can like <laughs> ask for stuff and it gets looked at. This is gonna really call us to Matt on all the just things. We're like, well, we're not gonna bother <laughs> looking that up, and now we don't have an excuse. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna no find cartilage. some truth now. The urethra passes from the bladder to the tip of the. Yeah. So it's yeah. so it's tissue. Yeah. Whatever. What's tissue exactly? I mean, tissue is a lot of things. Isn't that just they a just catch-all say connective word? Tissue. Isn't yeah. that a catch-all word what for like it? the stuff it's we're just made some of? Tissue. You know the stuff. That's yeah. kind of connecting everything. It's just stuff. Penis is made of just stuff. <laughs> okay. Wait, so this, this, the arm, arm and why is my, my was, my was, I don't know how to, okay. Germ, a German former computer repair technician, important to know, who received international attention for murdering and eating a voluntary victim. Is it murder though? In 2001, whom he had found via the internet. After Moya's whatever, and the victim jointly attempted to eat the victor's severed penis. Oh, they both. I forgot that they both ate it. 
Oh, I didn't know. That's romantic. That's so sweet. Like, how can you? That, the dude I mean, the lady in the tramp, dick. his yeah. dick. They, you, you'd have to lady in the tramp it. You got one dick. Yeah. You know, this is probably the only time you're ever gonna get to eat a dick, <laughs> or have and or have your dick eaten. Yeah. How dare them if they didn't lady in the tramp it? Anyway. <laughs> what would be funny is if they had like two different ideas on how they wanted it cooked. Like they didn't. That's the one thing they didn't talk they, about. It's a split pizza. You got to cook it both. Yeah. It's like all right. Well, we'll have it again. It's an amuse bouche each. You know? Yeah. You we'll can't. do a chef's table tasting. We'll <laughs> cut it up, and each one will be done. Yeah, you got to do that. Sever it into like at least 12 pieces. Well, it depends on how big the guy's dick <laughs> or is. Or just like penis Doesn't three it, ways. Isn't it? Okay, you having this initial conversation when you meet each other, these two men, and then and the guy who like has always wanted to cut someone's dick off and eat it, he's like so excited. But also then he's just like wondering how big is this dick like, going to be? He you has know? to have seen and the pictures. They had to exchange pictures. They exchanged pictures first. But yeah, but you first you realize... Think- oh, sorry. You first realize that... <laughs> that you're going to get to, you know what I mean? Like that moment where you're yeah. like, <laughs> cause the guy, I feel like the guy had a four and a half inch dick. I don't know why. I don't. I feel like it was a small dick. No, I feel like people with small dicks don't want them cut want, off. Don't want them I feel like people with some substance want it cut off. It's too you heavy. Know? It's a burden at this point. All, Let's, yeah. It's just like people with small dicks. This isn't dicks, me. If I'm the small five, dick people want it cut off, and it's, it's in like big. a feminization kind of like yeah. role play way. That's which true. some people do. Remember we talked about the Nullos? The, right, right, the, right. The gay yeah, they, men, cis gay men who have their dicks taken off and sometimes their nipples and it's just the butthole. Just a Kindle that you put balls. a screwdriver yeah. through. Yeah. yeah. That's so hot. Like they have like, yeah, just a little hole for their I urethra. I think that should become really popular. I'm very into it. The more men who want to cut their, and that's why I say to people who are upset by this kind of stuff. It's like, aren't you glad that <coughs> some people are doing that? Yeah. Isn't it better and so much more hilarious that, there, that it, it's like that thing of like, if you can think about it, it's probably happened. And it's like, yes. yeah, someone actually did this. Like It was inevitable. I mean, humans have been eating. We had to wait until two thousand for so long. No, two thousand one for this to happen. Two thousand and one years after the birth of our Lord, we finally someone ate someone, a human's dick before that. Yeah, they're but, okay. 100%. The recorded history, recorded even in recorded history, well, I just you're mean telling recorded, me there's never been like some king or tyrant somewhere that hasn't right. like nommed on a dick. Especially there's like there's probably a kid, been some kings and or queens who were like were a delicacy oh, to someone. God. Like little Vienna sausages in a bowl. <laughs> we gotta look that up too. How has that? How much has that happened throughout history that people have been eating each other's penises people for one reason or another? Eating dicks. So my was killed his victim and proceeded to eat a large amount of his flesh. Okay, so that might be that he ate more than dick. Maybe he got a little uh, greedy and started eating too much of him, and that's why he died. In that case, he should go to prison. Yeah, um, well, also, just you violated the boundaries of this uh, thing that you set up. So just the yeah, basic kink fetish practices, exactly. even. That's a no-go. You, yeah. <laughs> that's why we have clear, Also, the murder of somebody, but boundaries. like, yeah. Yeah, he was convicted of manslaughter <coughs> and sentenced to eight years and six months in prison. Manslaughter is an interesting one for this. Like, so you... Well, because I think there was so much consent between them. It couldn't be well, like first degree where you planned it out and it's premeditated but this like, was premeditated not like but it's not like a i'm going out and stalking someone to murder them right it has thing. a different vibe but i feel like the way the law is worded this is a weird case where like technically this was first degree murder if you're going to call this murder at all i think you have to they're just they're just it's a cop out to call it manslaughter they're like well it's kind of murder kind of wasn't and eh, call it manslaughter but that's not what manslaughter is manslaughter is like you're committing some other crime and in the course of that someone dies maybe they considered that the crime they were committing was cannibalism cannibalism isn't technically maybe murder it, it's just eating yeah and it's and illegal so and then he wasn't intending to murder yeah but in the course of cannibalism the guy dies yeah all right fair enough honestly when you said eight years my first thought was like that guy had to thought worth it like for sure yeah. it's worth it only eight years and you got to eat someone's dick like that's your fantasy that's our way as a as a species of saying hey no one else do that but if you do, what? is it, it worth it, eight hey, years? Is it worth eight years? Exactly. Don't do it if it's not worth eight years. What state was it in, though? And because... if it's not worth you dying, because I don't know if the guy knew he was going to die who got the dick cut off. Yeah. We did maybe learn from that that it's not that easy. But at the same time, if you could do that shit consensually, 
then you could do it safely where the hospital people could have saved him. But because just like with Mr. Hands, this shit's illegal, then you wind yeah. up bleeding out before the people can save you or whatever Essentially, happens. we need to legalize most everything and provide mm -hmm. safe public solutions for how to engage in it. But people aren't ready to have the dick-eating conversation yet. Well, and the part of the problem with all of these freedoms that we want is that everyone in our country who's running anything, because, because everyone in our country is incompetent, pretty much, everyone who's doing any job is incompetent. Almost everyone. Even us. Even us, yeah, especially, <laughs> potentially. Um, this whole country is like a bunch of spoiled kids. And so, no, I mean, people are like, fuck the police, fuck the teachers, fuck the government, fuck you, probably, are you good at your job, I would ask most people? <laughs> yeah. Are you, are you passionately trying your best to make the world a better place and doing whatever, like, what are we talking about? So, so, so many people are so incompetent that, like, you're like, yeah, we should regulate all kinds <laughs> of stuff. We should, <clears throat> we should have, you know, healthcare that caters to the really nuanced psychological shit that's going on. But instead, we just have people handing out pills and. Yeah. All I'm asking sucks is that we at job. least just let someone cut someone's dick off yeah so but i think that we have for good enough for fucking reasons because the doctors do know how to do this yeah. they do know how to save you if you cut your dick off and you're bleeding out or whatever they could have done it and i think they could have probably saved mr hands if they could have done surgery right I mean, there yeah he would have had to have gone to a hospital pretty quickly but didn't he like rip his pancreas or something like that yeah or something he... ripped inside there yeah well, or maybe you need sort of like... Isn't that... Sort of like... So you know how in childbirth you have a doula? Yeah. Sort of the horse fucking you doula. You know, the one who kind of knows how to <laughs> how to get... First of all, yes. how about a miniature horse? Could you be satisfied with a miniature horse? A lot of Is people it do the concept? fuck miniature horses. Do they? Yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like definitely a thing. We all learned from Mr. Hands. <laughs> that's a joke I made for years. I'm like, I wish someone had just told Mr. Hands about miniature horses. It's so funny that now... People are like, that. they did learn from Mr. Hands and are getting fucked <laughs> oh, from yeah. miniature horses. Oh, it's a beautiful place. Isn't it wild Fucking that like at one jokes. point we as children just watched a man get fucked to death by a horse on the internet? <laughs> I never saw it, but I you did didn't? watch the video. And I don't know whether this was uh, like supposed to be real footage or a reenactment. I did watch the video where th their parents, his parents watched him watch the video. Oh, dude. Because the police were showing them? I almost think it would have been easier to watch him getting fucked to death by the horse. Yeah, than, of course. Than watching his, his, his old mother. Christian parents. They didn't have to watch that. I feel like the cops just were like, this should happen. We want to see this happen. I don't know what the whatever it was. Again, I'm not even sure if it was if it's real, but it was in the documentary. I watched a four hour YouTube documentary Holy about this shit. shit. And I think I didn't oh, you watched see, a four hour yeah, so documentary about it. They didn't show the video, but they played the audio of it. In four hours they never showed it. I guess I know, it's on YouTube. I, it was so you on, can't. Yeah, I didn't know. I was you know, I didn't realize until the end that they weren't actually gonna fucking show the thing. So I thought, whatever. But I don't know how to but find stuff on the door. But you four hours to watch a man get no, but fucked I, by a horse well, and didn't get it. Well, I wasn't waiting. I was it learning all like kinds it. of it. No, I was having a wonderful time. I mean, it was also harrowing. But um, <laughs> no, my favorite part, because I did get to hear it, though, if you remember, it's after he, because he's getting fucked by the horse. Because mm -hmm. he gets the horse, they tie the horse, he and his friend tie the horse up, for anybody who hasn't engaged with this, <laughs> tie the horse up and get the horse drunk. Because I guess horses don't normally just go, ooh, a human butt. That sounds like a good idea. They they get the horse drunk? They get the horse drunk because it gets that. the horse all horny, just like humans. Like, well, you get us drunk and we want to fuck even more. And so you get the horse drunk and it goes, human butt will do. So, you know, <laughs> sticks his butt out or whatever. I imagine I didn't see it. And then is just getting fucked by this horse. But then he kind of like, at some point, like, I think you can see him be like, oh, and he falls off the horse's dick yeah. onto the ground. I think it's been described to me. Um, and I would imagine. And but then... You hear him before they like call the ambulance and whatever. You hear him just go, "Did he come?" <laughs> <It's> my... <laughs> the fact that this man asked whether that horse came when it had just fucked him to death, and then so many men aren't asking their lovers <laughs> whether they came the kindness he showed this <laughs> <laughs>
that's wild. So yeah, I Should remember I watching it like when I was, I oh, got, I don't know how old I was. Like couldn't have been 12, 13. Jesus Christ. You know? Like me and my this friends. This is how you create the Ava Smart, know. everybody. <laughs> like, <laughs> producer I mean, made, of the pervert yeah, show. Yeah, th- yeah, I had to have been about thirteen. Uh, yeah, twelve or thirteen. Like we had all just gotten the internet, or not all, but like a few houses. And like my friend, like had discovered that you could watch videos on the internet. Like and we were like, what? And so we found like fucked up websites that yeah. just had like weird videos on it and then we'd heard about mr hands and so we found a, the mr hands video but it was i guess clipped because i didn't see the they get the horse drunk part i just well, saw just read and seen the documentary yeah, what and, i yeah. remember seeing uh is you know him bent over and like them getting the horse in him and the horse like thrust him <sighs> pretty hard and him going like oh oh shit <laughs> and then, yeah you hear the fear in his voice yeah. he's like oh this isn't actually yeah. okay and then like uh, oh man oh god you can imagine and, the moment and then like oh. you hear someone go, go like oh shit did he come <laughs> and so for a while we thought that he died because horses come so much it like exploded inside him and killed him like that in our like child brains was like the reason that he died was it because he came <laughs> like we were like Oh, he was bound to get fucked by the horse, but he was afraid of it coming inside him because horses come so much that naturally it would blow up your inside. This has changed my mind. I wonder if it was the friend who said, did he come? And the friend was going like, why would you get off him? Did he come? (laughs) (laughs) You need to go back and listen to the tone of voice or who was saying it. Because, yeah, yeah, maybe it's the friend being like, hey, is my show over? Yeah. (laughs) Oh, do you know how long it took us to tie up that horse and get drunk? Do you know how much beer we had to give that fucking horse? (laughs) Yeah, they did it in beer. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And so, Yeah. So maybe it was him who said, did he come? Meanwhile, the guy's like, oh, my God, just I just love <laughs> empathizing so much. Like, I love that I can't I get to just put my, you know, I'm not doing that. But thank you for doing it, because now I can have the moment where I, you know, you want to get fucked so badly. Yeah. You want to get violated kind of fucked, yeah. right? And then you get your, and this is your lifelong thing. You can imagine You're how like, fucking horny for this he was. This wasn't and how his much, first time. No, I, it couldn't have been his I first time. I can't remember time. if this was the first time or not. It might not have been. He might have been, yeah. He took that horse cock like a pro. Like he, they were too practiced at it. It's just him yeah. and a buddy, and they managed you're to right. get Maybe a horse to fuck him. Maybe they had done it a bunch him. of times. That seems okay, like, still, you're doing your favorite thing. It was yeah. for a long time. He was horny for this and working yeah. his way up. And you're finally, you get to do your favorite thing. And then one time you feel the moment where something ruptures. Something's wrong. Oh, I felt it with normal dick where I'm like, that doesn't feel right. We got to well, stop. But that's different. But I'm saying, imagine that yeah. times a horse dick. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I have. Oh, uh, well, that's right. You, oh. Cause like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> like in that moment, <laughs> like when I watched that video and he died, I was like, it never occurred to me that uh, someone could get fucked by like something other than another person. Right. Right. And so I was just like, my mind oh broke. My and I was like, wait, what? I mean, it didn't happen immediately. But like that seed was planted. That was the first time I remember being like, whoa, people f- get fucked by horses. Mm-hmm. Like, and then it was like, well, what about dragons and werewolves and all the other things that you can combine with b- vaguely human characteristics and get fucked by yeah yeah and you've explored that oh yeah dimension. I have a, we have a horse cock dildo you right. know not a full-size one because that's like hard but we have like a probably like a miniature horse <laughs> like a little yeah. sh- you know tiny cute horse cock dildo that has like a come tube out of it so you can like pump yourself full of a horse lots stick. Of, yeah, lots of fake cum. You should do a reenactment of the Mr. Hands saying. Oh man, maybe I should. I was <laughs> wondering what I was gonna do for like. Kind of figure out wh- whose line is did he come the first, but. I actually, sorry, I I think I might do that for perverts now because like I was. Oh, oh are we gonna have a Mr. Hands? That's a great idea. <laughs> yeah, for perverts. but like I think I might have Greg Abbott be Mr. Hands and like Greg Abbott's Mr. Hand. Like I'm gonna like replace it. Like you know, like the true do like a a Dateline 2020, the true story of Mr. That's Hands, and like that's what this Gre- was Greg Abbott before, before the tree his, fell on him. Yeah. The, the tree that, like, fell on him, but yeah. really he got fucked to paralysis by a horse. Yeah. Okay, there you go. I and, like but that. But to cover it up, they just called it Mr. The tree, Hands. Yeah, I mean, they called it Mr. Hands, but it's really Greg Abbott. Yeah. yeah. There you go. That's a good one. 
that way because i've been i always kind of want to have not that anybody should i guess i should legally say nobody should murder greg abbott but i do like having some of my skits in with greg abbott in mortal peril at least you know yeah so getting fucked to death by a horse feels pretty feels, great that's gratifying yeah there's something sweet about that's what that. should have happened to joffrey on game of thrones yeah that would have been much more satisfying. No one really ever has great deaths for sadistic assholes, you know? Yeah. It's, like, sometimes it's, it, like, the, at best, it's just, like, a woman, like, stabbing them slowly or gouging some eyes out. But it's like, let's, like, fucking... Let's be a little creative. Let's make it last. Let's really look at yeah. his eyes while it's happening. Mm-hmm. Can we talk about our personal lives? Sure, yeah. I don't know if you have anything. I just have one little cute story. You go with your cute story. Um, so my girlfriend's mom like was looking at pictures of me. Um, and she when they were together and her mom was like zooming in with her fingers on my face and stuff. Mm -hmm. And her mom is like uh, an artist. She um really really thinks about the angles of people's faces and the, all the little nuances and everything mm -hmm. um and she's chinese but she was zooming in on me and she she kept saying jibushu nan haizuma which means isn't this a boy <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> my girlfriend was just telling me that story and i'm like uh, <laughs> nothing could be more my <laughs> <laughs> a little gender euphoria place yeah <laughs> this artist woman being like this is a non haita yeah i'm proud of you that's cool you passed my the jawline. artist sniff test <laughs> well and when i passed because it's it reminds me of like my my mom recently met my girlfriend yeah. and um when she, when we were leaving and my mom was saying goodbye she was just like long hair and short hair i get it yin and yang <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, exactly. And then her mom's all like, boy, girl. All right, I get it. <laughs> these moms are just like, as long as we do a feminine mask, I can see that that's God's plan. <laughs> God's in there somewhere. Yeah. When it's a mask and a mask, we're all like, all right, that's hot if it's two men. And femme on femme, similarly, that's hot if it's two women. But, but is God we're like, do you, Yeah. Is that a marriage that God... Uh, or, no, that's that comes from the Dark Lord. That's the Dark Lords. Yeah, that's, which you know, hell Satan, but yeah, just call it call a spade a spade. <laughs> <laughs> Got to put points on the right side of the board. <laughs> uh, well, congratulations! Thank you so much. I'm proud of you. You should be like you should ask her to draw you. Oh god <laughs> do it see because like yeah, what yeah. comes out is going to be very telling yeah yeah oh my god i you can't know? wait for her mother to draw. <laughs> <laughs> i'm so in love <laughs> okay. this is kind of oddly erotic because you would get off to the fact that her mother drew you but yeah it's, no, like, it's like it's like one of our is it bestiality questions like is it are you fucking your mom in law semi yeah it's like it's sexual sensual like that's yeah it's i don't know it's, it's intimate. intimate yeah yeah it's related to mm. things but it's you know <laughs> i wouldn't be like rubbing my clit while i was thinking about it you know it's just you yeah. wouldn't no it's like it's rubbing my it, ego go, it's like rubbing i know my, but like, you jerk off to that shit you're telling me you think there would never be a time can jerk off to that where shit. I don't. you'd be going there and then all of a sudden like you're telling me you would never it could cross mind. my mind it's and lots of things might cross my mind yeah what is it indulging in intrusive thoughts at orgasm you know like, yeah that's yeah i mean <laughs> <laughs> it could happen but it wouldn't it's still like i could think about something during <laughs> orgasm and it's not necessarily sexual <laughs> uh but i would love i mean that's so cool because her mom you know is so artistic and like sees people and yeah. she i'm like terrified to meet her because it's like the first impression can be everything and then she's just like so you haven't met her yet? i haven't met her yet because i'm uh. waiting I, i'm i'm trying to learn more chinese before i meet her um because she only speaks chinese and okay um 
but she's like so good at reading people and stuff that she's like so perceptive even when she can't tell what they're saying. You're like, so, oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, I'm just shit. like, I gotta get my soul in shape. <laughs> I gotta get everything in my life in soul in shape and learn <laughs> Mandarin. <laughs> Give me a year. This is like a modern meet the fuckers kind of situation. I don't know if I saw that one. Really? The Ben Stiller movie where like he has to go home and meet his girlfriends or his fiance's family. It's like one of the people from the mafia movies or something. No, but it's Robert De Niro is in it. Uh, they're not involved in the mafia, but like no, I just meant Robert. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the dad, and he like worked for the CIA. Right. Uh, uh, but oh, the first the first movie was called Meet the Parents. Yes. And then the second one was called Meet the Fockers. I think I just saw the second one. Actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But this is like a the this is the 2023 version of that. Yeah. You got to fucking learn Mandarin. You got to get your soul in line, and you have to impress like a conservative Chinese woman. Well, I don't. She's not like necessarily conservative. Oh, I don't know why. I she's just that. Chinese, but you know. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean she's older, but it's like I wouldn't because her parents are artists, so mm, I think there's true, yeah. more. Yeah. Oh, I would love to. I oh, guess. What if we had her on my... the podcast? <laughs> and my girlfriend translated. That's so fun. <laughs> Sorry, I mean my other podcast. You are blushing right now, just so you know. Yeah. <laughs> like your whole face is red. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't, you know, it's one of those things where, like, I need to talk to her about it. Like, should I give her a nickname? Should I call her her actual name? Mm-hmm. I got to ask her about it. Yeah, you got to figure that out. Yeah. But for now, I can say my girlfriend. No. Mm-hmm. I love that. Mm-hmm. Anyway, <laughs> that's what's new with me. Also, oh, I got. Oh, I guess I need to ask her about something. But I, I did something with her that, uh, you know, we might talk about. Oh but, yeah. Um, I guess I need her permission for this too. But Fuck, yeah. now I want to know. I know. <laughs> Can we just cut this part and then I hear like a <laughs> taste of it and then? <laughs> yeah, we'll do this for the Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> I'll ask. And no more Patreon. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I guess we could say <laughs> if you want to hear what we just actually look in the camera, I guess. If you want to hear what we just talked about, go to our Patreon. Patreon.com slash genderfluids. But also it's possible I that I won't get my girlfriend's consent for us to put any of that out. In so, which case, no one will get to hear it. But there's check, other, check our Patreon. There's other cool shit on there. We're going to start. Yeah, there is other cool shit on there. And we're going to start putting out content regularly now. So Excited. Yeah. Uh, Thank per- you so much to everybody who has oh. subscribed to our Patreon for Who's all this time. Who's still here. Yeah. yeah. There's some of you that we are really fucking hanging in there. It. And that <laughs> means a lot. Yeah, that that pulled me out of a financial hole recently because we haven't touched the money yeah. from our Patreon in like four years. Yeah, we just and, let it build up. And yeah. I miscalculated some things and had a hotel room fee hit my hotel oh, or shit. hit my card when I thought I'd already paid it. And so I was severely overdrawn. And oh, damn. So pulling out that Patreon That's money. That's why I finally got my Patreon money. <laughs> kind of covered it and gave me a little bit of cash to float for a second. Oh, jeez. Little- so I could do perverts. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. Well. Um, Anywho, how's y'all's financial think... lives going? <laughs> give us three dollars a month, please. Please give us three dollars a month. I yeah. <laughs> I think I'm going to use that money because I was wondering because my girlfriend's going to Korea, and in October and like invited me to come along. Was yeah. Like I'll I'll use my like airline flights for your flight if you can just you know and I'm like. Can I really swing that? But I'm like, I want to. It's been years since I've yeah. been like really outside the country. I don't count Canada really or whatever. But um, so, you know, anyway, I'm very grateful to all the Patreon people because now I'm going to go to Korea. Fuck so yeah. You. I'm so happy for you. This is going to be great. Um, on our Patreon. I'm going to eat so many food. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be great. Oh, I'm jealous. Yes, you, you have to say you're 18 or older to view our Patreon, by the way. But. I forget what we have. I, oh yeah, our most popular level, five dollars a month, which we do have some shout outs we need to do. We should get those people's names. Oh yeah. Uh, but yeah, we'll shout you out on the podcast, which would be more fun now oh, that we I'll have use video. Oh, and I'll use Tutorial Fantasy. I yeah. think I need to get on that too. Three dollars a month. Okay, we're gonna start really doing these things. You know, uh, for ten dollars a month, we'll read your little faggoty introduction, like we do in ours, where it's like, oh, my name's Ava, and I'm a, 
I think right now our introduction needs to be updated. It still says I'm 26. Yeah, it says that like, online too. Yeah, but well, it's like, I I'm thought a 26 we just decided to be 26 girl. and 32 forever. We did, but then I thought we decided that it was kind of tacky and we didn't <laughs> like it anymore. Yeah, we probably shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, please well, do it. That also helps us pay Justin so we can look cool like this forever in perpetuity, which we would very much like to do. Um, and if you haven't checked out our Patreon before, um, the last project that we did was going through the gender wikis because people keep coming up with new identities. Yeah. Um, if you think pan gender is funny or whatever, if you think neo boy <laughs> is ridiculous, <laughs> just or enjoy until you hear our like Demi boy cuddle plush. <laughs> Demi boy flux. cuddle plush. Elliot Page is gender famously. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that, we had a different one for Elliot it Page. Was, it was like, do my, do my plush soft boy. <laughs> yeah. Which is a real gender. It, yeah. It sounds like we're making things. They do have, they do market for like satirical. Like they think mm -hmm. it's purely being satirical. But our theory, our running theory is that it's a, middle a school teacher. there's a middle school teacher somewhere who's assigning this to a project. Come as up a with a new identity. Yeah. You have to come up with a flag. Bonus and points for a flag. Well, because some of them do flags, create. some of them don't. But yeah. A, a lot of flags are really page. cute, and then some of them are quite tacky. We give our opinions on the flags. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know of anyone else who's ever done this to really <laughs> go through the taxonomy of <laughs> modern identities. <laughs> it's a real contribution. It, it, it really is to the world. And because, you know, we, we almost always start by making fun of the ridiculous identity. And then by the end of it, at least I have identified as that. Yeah. So. Yeah. I think we're fair. I think we're a pretty good we're judge. We're fair and balanced here. I haven't I had anybody are. reach out vehemently disagreeing with our opinion yeah. on any of them yet. <laughs> good point. Which is rare if you're Just like, rare. considering <laughs> that you're critiquing, overly critiquing we get notes and about ranking a lot of genders. what we say. Yeah. But not. <laughs> but no one has ever disagreed with our assessment of your faggoty little genders. <laughs>so in my personal life well i've had a lot of different things going on a lot of good things but uh i i think i have like a daddy now oh, like, a yeah. like a consistent daddy that i like and click with <clears throat> i'm gonna call him daddy e uh which i guess it's gonna be harder to say daddy than e? yeah like flow. well his name starts with a me so I have them on my phone as like daddy. Maybe if I thought of him as daddy ye, then it would feel better. Daddy ye? No, it's too close to ye, the rapper. Daddy ye? I mean, I thought ye. Oh, wait, that's ye. Ye. Who's ye? Also Kanye. Oh, ye is also Kanye. Yeah. And uh, you chose to say ye, the rapper, instead of ye, Kanye? Well, because he goes by. that He's been referred to that way. Oh. I thought you knew. I'm trying to figure it all out. That's a lot. Ye and yay? Yeah. Hmm. I think. A bit much. Yeah. Everything about him's a bit much at this point. Yeah. Um, That's where I draw the line. <laughs> <laughs> we had to cut that out after, as if we're doing the fucking Nazi porn at the end. <laughs> You're like, the anti-Semitism is fine, but it's I draw the line at the multiple names. I know, but it's just like, oh my God. I think twenty. I think people are figuring out when things are jokes now. Jesus Christ. And if you're not, you might not be watching Gender Fluids. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Like, I hope you... I think people have figured out our senses of humor by now. I don't know. Sometimes I don't even know if I understand my sense of humor. True. But yeah, so I have so this deep. daddy. Uh, it's wild. So like, I met him on Grinder of all places. But like it worked almost like a dating. Did y'all say like looking for daddy little stuff? Yeah, yeah. I, that's the only reason I'm on Grinder. Really, is like looking for uh, daddies. Looking for a father just, figure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or mommies, but there aren't that many mommies on Grinder. Yeah. Um. But uh, we met. We messaged. Uh, hold on. <laughs> yeah. The, oh, I love that. You people tell get... me the sounds I make into microphones are nasty. I know, but you don't have to hear them in your ears, like with headphones on. I it is like going to be funny that, that they all get to see me do this now. Whereas usually I like lean away from the mic and like yeah. do it and come back. Now it's just like, no, nah, I got my fucking spit napkin behind me. 
<laughs> fucking gross bitch. Yeah. <laughs> she get like some hankies. You know? I, they would be soaked so gross. fast. Ugh, gross. And I'm not good with doing laundry frequently. <laughs> so then I would just have a bunch of like crusty spit hankies uh, everywhere, you know? Jesus Christ. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I met him on, <laughs> I met him on Grinder. He said all the right things. We had a really good conversation. And he like shared pictures of himself right away, like nice, good pictures, like normal pictures, not just like cock pics. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, he's really fucking hot, like into him, good daddy looking vibe, got a great mustache, like a good dad stash. And I'm like, mm, here for this. Uh, but I was like, he looks fucking familiar. Like, I, f I feel like I've seen him before or gone on a date with him before. And I went and I asked uh, Alexis, I was like, hey, is this so-and-so? Because we'd both gone on a date with the same dude. And she's like, yeah. no, I don't think so. Like, that, it looks kind of like him, but I don't think it's him. I was like, okay. Because when I went on a date with this dude, it was with him and his girlfriend at the time. And like, we got drinks and I ended up fucking both of them. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was great. Like, we had a great threesome. Uh, I talked about it on here at one point. It, like how I talked about how good his dick was. It was just like the perfect size, like oh, yeah. shape, dick, just like it clicked. Mm -hmm. um, it clicked, that's a pleasing way to think of it. Yeah, it was just like, oh, that just fits, right? Mm -hmm. And so we chat, we eventually decide to meet up, share phone numbers, make a coffee date for like a late night coffee date one night. And like uh, when he sent me his number, uh, he was like, hey, this is so-and-so, by the way, because he didn't have his full name on Grinder, And I was like, fuck, like, it is that dude. It's totally that dude. And I was like, do I like, like I don't know if he remembers, because like, this was like yeah. six years ago that I fucked them, right? Yeah. I look way different. And so I'm like, shit, do I say anything? Like, do I just play it off and like see if he recognizes me? You gotta say something. You can't just both be like fucking <laughs> creepily waiting for the other person. It's so weird. I mean, as soon as you figure it out, you go, oh, hey. Yeah, I, I don't know. Well, part of me thought of it as like a fun experiment and like transness, right? Where uh -huh. it's just like, what if he doesn't recognize me? And yeah, because like, you transitioned like five, six years more than. Well, it was just like, I was already in like transitioning and on hormones. It was just, I was really early on yeah. in it and like had a completely only different a year vibe. Or two in, probably. Yeah. And yeah. so like, uh, I was like, what if he just doesn't recognize me? It was a kind of a hot thought for a second. Yeah. Yeah. But then it was like, I, I was sending my name. I was like, hey, like I didn't get the opportunity to make the moral. I was saved from oh, having to make the moral decision. Uh, yeah. And so I was like, hey, this is, uh, my name's Ava, by the way. Cause my name's not actually on Grinder. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so like, he was like, oh, shit. He was like, hey, oh, I think we went on a date a while back. And I was like, yeah, we definitely did. I don't remember the date, but I do remember going home and fucking you and your girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, oh, yeah. He was like, that was a great time. Well, good news. We're married now. <laughs> and I was like, yes, yeah. this is these are all good signs. Like, yeah. He he rolled with it well, and like he's married to this like woman now, and like they're having like, like a good relationship. I'm like, that makes me very confident in like his stability yeah. and like you know him as a person, right? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, so yeah, we like hung out and like had a coffee date that went well, and then like a few days later, we had like a daytime little date where like I came over and like. Uh, well, we came up with, like, a loose set of rules and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, like, I'm not allowed to, like, sit on furniture next to him. I have to sit on the ground unless I ask him. And then I can, like, be brought up, like, on a furniture and things like that. Uh, I'm not allowed to curse. Um, <laughs> like, uh, I have to sleep naked if I'm with him, which is, like, not hard because that's how I sleep. But yeah. I like it. And we're going to start working on, like, position training where, like, I have to, like, be ready for inspection and things uh, by him. And there are, like, some other rules that I can't remember right now because I'm really stoned. So. That's fine. Uh, yeah. But, like, we had a little day. Is after that kind of what you like about uh, daddy stuff? You like kind of, like, having rules? Um, I like different things about it. Like, I can get into it in different ways. I can get into it from more of, like, just a care being taken care of nurturing way which is very much a thing that he's into yeah uh, that's what his big incentive is in it apparently mm -hmm. uh, but he also like has like a kind of a 
sadistic y dami side of like liking rules to be followed. So it's kind of a synthesis of what we're both looking for, where it's mm -hmm. like, I can get into this kind of aspect of it. And it is a thing I'm into, and that is what he's also looking for. So it works with us. But I'm also really looking for like a role play nurturing aspect, which he really loves giving. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, it's, it's, I don't know if that's making sense. It's like, yeah, it's not what, exactly what I'm looking for. Like I have a pr yeah. it, an idea of, but it is like a situation that very much fills like a large role play fantasy of mine that like I could get into being sustained for a long time. Cause yeah, I do like having rules and things like that. Like I am outside of like little stuff, just like really kinky and submissive and like the idea of like being controlled and like having to follow rules and having that kind of part of your uh, agency stripped back and there with that, like the responsibility of having to think about what to do with that. You don't have to consider what action to make because you have to do like X, Y, Z, right? And that feels nice. So like, yeah, that's a, that whole thing I'm into outside of like the little space stuff. Right. But like, cause like the day we had this like play date, like we didn't do any of that, right? Like this is still all in the planning stages. We're still just getting to know each other and I'm still just getting comfortable being like kind of little around him, right? Like opening up to that. And so like I came to his house, he like, uh, uh, oh yeah, I have to hold his hand while we walk and I can't walk in front of him. Like I have to walk beside him, which is mm. just adorable. Yeah, That's it's good. fucking, makes you feel so cute like anything that makes you for me that makes me feel yeah infantile and little i'm just like oh, 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 oh take care of me <laughs> um okay. this is good and so like he took me to we went to target and then uh we went and he picked out like uh let me pick out a lego set that i wanted to build and i picked out like a tie fighter lego set and then we went and we picked out all my favorite snacks um and then we went back to the house and he like made me a little pallet on the ground and like got to sit on the ground and build Legos. And he would just bring me my favorite snacks and like refill my snacks when I wanted because I was too little to get up and get my own snacks. <laughs> Damn. And like, then we just cuddled on the couch and watched movies afterwards for a while, fell asleep, took a nap, woke up. And like, I was real horny at that point after being taken care of so well and uh -huh. so then we like went to his bedroom and like fucked and it, yeah again it was really good <laughs> <laughs> it's just like really great like he has like the best dad energy and like the best like i'm gonna take care of you little girl energy and like just like laid me on my back like went down on me like made me suck his dick and then just like yeah just fucking railed me and like it was like a whole thing where it was like it was nice because it was like a it perfectly fit what i like about doing little stuff when fucking which is like the fact that like it's not about me it's about you using me right as like you're little and so i don't have to worry about doing anything like i'm just a hole here to be used and to be cute and so he just fucked me for his pleasure right like right. he just wanted it was about him getting off so he just fucked me however he wanted and got off on the sounds that i was making and things like that and so mm -hmm. it was just really yeah it was a really good time and it didn't last too long which is also my favorite where it's like <laughs> it's like look i get yeah, everybody's like oh i can fuck for 45 minutes it's like why like sometimes it's like dude like i'd really I'm waiting for you to nut. I'm not excited. Different to kinds see... of sex are for different things and yeah. different, or different amounts of time for sure. Yeah, like sometimes there's times where it's like, yeah, like we're all about let's just fuck as long as we can, right. fuck sometimes around. Sometimes it just and... feels amazing to just keep fucking. Yeah, but other, other... times you just want to have like a frenzy of. But sometimes you, you can know. tell someone is trying to fuck for a long time to prove a thing, right? Or like yeah, they're doing that's that. a bummer. And it's just like, no, man, like I'm waiting for your nut. Like that is yeah. the that's the cherry on top of all this for me. Yeah. And like, uh, <laughs> without it, like, what are yeah. we doing here? I'm just, I'm just waiting for that to be inside me or on me somewhere, right? And so the fact that like, he fucked me real well for like 15, 20 minutes, uh, you know, not like an insignificant amount yeah, of time, like a, a nice good like fucking, I came, he came, like, yeah. and then afterwards we cuddled and then I went the fuck home. I don't know. And that then we sound perfect. Too. Yeah. And then he came over again the other day to our place. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you came home afterwards. And like again, yeah. like you brought me like another Lego thing. Yeah, you were on the ground, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was. I was on I was on I was where I belong. Uh -huh. uh, on the ground. Uh, uh -huh. 
and literally like I built Legos and we watched Star Wars clone troopers and like just kind of chat. Oh, and we played a cute board game that he bought for me, like a little kid board game that actually ended up being really fun. Um, oh, which one is it? It was called like the Magic Eight Ball oh, or yeah, whatever. Oh yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I like my girlfriend and I both saw that and we're like, this looks fun. <laughs> yeah, it was really good. Like he and it's a cooperative game, so you play yeah. together. Like he and yeah, I played I love it. Yeah, little cooperative games. That yeah, now it was so good. Um, yeah, we did that, and then I built Lego, and I was like, hey, um, I was like, is there anything, like, we need to do, or can I do? And he's like, no, I'm just enjoying, like, being here and, like, being in the space with you and hanging out. It's like, okay, I just don't, I just feel the need to entertain. He's like, no, don't. He's like, I'm happy doing this for the rest of the time. So we literally just did that and then cuddled for, like, a few hours. It was so nice, right? And yeah. it's just like, oh, okay, this is the, this is the daddy, daddy vibe. Daddy and chill. <laughs> yeah, where it's like that's it. This is yes, that's exactly it. It's been surprising it. how hard it's been to fucking find it, though. It sounds so simple, but it's like no, it does. It does seem like it would maybe take a little bit of time to get to <laughs> that, right? But that's what you know. That's what I want for people: get men to do exactly what you want them to do, to act exactly like you know what you want them to act, whatever. But that that should be required of men, like. You want to yeah. really groom them into <laughs> doing what you really... That's, like, that's what they want to do. I mean, the, those of them that are good boys want to do whatever it, you want. Uh. <laughs> Turns out most women want to get used. <laughs> Gay news. Well, I guess we'll talk about the thing that... Everybody else is talking about the Bud Light thing. Dylan Mulvaney. Strikes again. <laughs> a person who I would prefer to never hear about. <laughs> yeah. Personally. Yeah. I don't, I, except I, I don't even know anything about her, right? Yeah. This is a little confusing with the Dylan thing, but I guess it's a cutesy androgynous name. But, but was that her name before? Or did she change it? I think it? so. Okay. So she's like a... So she was in the Book of Mormon? <coughs> no, I don't think so. I think I just heard that. She was in a production of Book of Mormon before. I mean, I don't know. She she might have been. I think she Justin's was... Just looking it up. I, I think she was originally in Glee. My eyesight is not okay. And then oh, like... Oh, Glee? Did I just switch those out? They're not saying on... They're just saying TikTok. Yeah, they're trying to make her sound like Miss Trans representative. Like, because she's... Cause, I mean, I'm sure she and her PR people had written this. Oh, yeah, the Book of Mormon. Elder White. Oh, huh. Hey. Yeah, okay. I don't know if she was, like, in the original thing or just played at some point. But anyway. She just played it at okay, some point. Okay, so... But, like, it's one of those things where, like, she's just a TikTok influencer. Right. She's just one of those people right and she's just only now been doing it for a year i mean look, she's been uh, well, trans transitioning is, hormonally for a year yeah right? well, she, did it, she did it she did it on the, tiktok yeah and, and was like, like i'm a girl 365 days i think we talked about this before i don't know I, if it made I don't it onto an it. episode i wasn't I, I didn't remember that this person existed until this bud light thing happened i mean you know i'm like they sound familiar but sure. yeah i don't know to me she just represents like such a fucking like basic bitch kind of neoliberal plug and play here's how you do transition like store-bought like yes. by the book plug she's and like play she's like kind of speed run what i what i and alexis introduced me to this called speed running transition which is like where oftentimes it's like trans women like they transition and then they just like have this list of things that they need to do that they think to like conform and to pass mm -hmm. and like she feels like she did that and then also but she did like, the facial feminization surgery she said that but like i didn't see I a difference okay. there's a whole there's a there's a lot of, there's a conspiracy so theory that she people are doing charts it. of jawlines yeah people why would you fake getting it for that's trans funny. clout like for that's like, funny because like it's a thing to like, stolen valor trans. yeah stolen valor stolen for FFS. FFS. <laughs> <laughs> Is anybody talking about this? <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah. We're Why don't we were talking about this. Bud Light or whatever? But that's hilarious. And so, uh, so, but I also. But she's think popular she, with some of the children she, on TikTok. Yes, I mean she's a she's a TikTok influencer. 
The well, she's in a high youths, bar. There's the insipid youths who are entertained by garbage right now. on TikTok. Right. That sounds about right for this fucking country. And so, like, for me, she also just represents, like, the way that she's, like, going about this is, like, such a fucking TikTok influencer, soldier sold the devil, like, way where it's, like, her whole transition has just been about... Because she wasn't that famous before transition. Right. It, her whole transition is just m making money, really. Right. And, like, if she does, like, a drop of good along the way, people are just going to be like, oh, it's so, 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 so good, oh, it's so good, mm -hmm. right? And, but it's really just, like, she's there to make, like, moderate Democrats and, like, moderate Republicans, like, feel good for supporting trans people and, like, to say Yas Queen. Because it does and, seem, like, especially this Yas Queen thing, it's like, this is one of these Yas Queen trans women like it's like you where you just seem like a gay dude who's calling yourself a woman no dylan levaney talks like a gay man yeah. trying to sound like a woman exactly exactly and i think a lot of us are seeing that going i know some trans people who seem like chicks you seem like a gay dude who's being a chick well, for the fucking youtube influencer whole game i don't think it's like that purposeful i think I know, she's, she's probably blind to he or she or whatever they she, or whatever that it's person she, is she's probably i think she's like a trans woman i just think that she transitioned and had a very sure sense of herself and started making a following off of it and like is just leading that little charge and the reality is is like she's only been doing it for a fucking year Mm -hmm. Like, the fact that she's meeting with President Biden and That's that insane. people are listening to her is fucking stupid. It's just because she is, like, a figure of debate and it's just, like, Ugh. you know. What a dumb, dumb culture. President Biden meeting with Dylan Mulvaney. Yes. Because she got famous because she transitioned on TikTok. Yeah. And, like, she, her video series is, like, it's day 236 of being a girl. And it's, like, now I'm shopping even more. Yeah, like, okay. You know. And let me tell you what I, it's, like, I, I can't. Girl. It boils the blood. I just love being a blood. girl now. Oh, God. Yeah. And so, and like, look, I'm not saying that, like, she should be put to the wall and shot, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not saying that she's, like, evil, although I do think that what she does causes some evil in the world. Yeah. She's like, sucking I think the cock might, of big corporations. And I think she might be doing more harm than good in yeah, the end. Yeah. I just love Bud Light. Like, is Bud Light <laughs> yeah, really a company that this. you should, I mean, should any of us be, look, they make, a product that isn't, you know, it's not made of high quality ingredients. I don't, I don't know. No, Maybe they're paying be. their workers well. Probably not. No. Look, it's owned by Anheuser Busch. Yeah, I you just, can't. You can't boycott that fucking company. They own everything. And also, like, they sent. So what? What it was is they sent her a can uh, with her face on it for her 365th day. Uh, her full Since transversary. Yeah. Uh, and like she made a video being like, Bud Light sent me this fucking can. I, she said, I couldn't I, imagine a better gift. <laughs> I'm like, you couldn't imagine a better gift than a can of Bud Light with your face on it? Okay. Oh, uh, let's be honest. Warm can of Bud Light. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, warm can of Bud Light. Yeah, how about if they sent it packed on ice so it was ready to drink? I don't, yeah. I don't That's think she has gift. the brain cells to have thought, I should chill this before I make a video. Anywho, uh, that was harsh. <laughs> <laughs> this dumb bit. I can't be that girl. I mean, if they sent me um, seven black Maine Coon cats and seven Flame Point Himalayan cats, that would be a better gift. Yeah. They're Bud Light with my face dream. on it. Yeah. Just saying. There's plenty of things, but. <laughs> but I don't know. People uh, boycotting it is silly. It's like. Bud Light's been sponsoring fucking pride parades for years. I mean, goddamn years. Bud Light in the 70s became the beer of choice for gay bars when right. gay bars started boycotting Coors. Right. Uh, in solidarity with, like, labor rights and things, I believe. And yeah. So Bud Light became the go-to bar. And, like, Bud Light, or, Bud, yeah, Bud Light and Anheuser-Busch knows who fucking drinks beer. Lots and lots of cheap beer. Yeah. Gay men at bars. Gay yeah. men at bars be drinking. And it's also like this was this was not like their Super Bowl ad. This was no. just Dylan on her own social media, right? Just yeah, like but she did like have like a little spiel about like apparently it's a thing called March Madness. I don't even know what that is, but I know there's no better way to enjoy March Madness than with a right. Bud Light. Like it was a fucking ad. But it was so Bud Light. during March Madness on, no, on TV. No, but on her page. That's what I'm saying. Oh, this yeah. shit was just on her page. Yeah. 
It's like, come on, people. Well, who are what's who's the country singer, or whoever? Who a oh, Kid Rock? Who's the shooting? I yeah. mean, he's clearly just doing this for attention. I don't know. I haven't seen the video the or heard anything is, like, from him. But come on. Who I cares? think what's fucking... Did he buy that in order to shoot it? No, I mean, I'm sure somebody just around ha- him had it. Had come it on, in his backyard. Rock. I don't know how much Bud Light he shot. Was it just one thing or... I was imagining like a big wall Shot, of it. No, just like a couple cases, I think. Okay, a couple, ca- couple cases. But like, it, for me, the... This might make me sound hokey. I don't know. I don't give a fuck, I guess. It's like, that's the, what's scary about it, though, is that, like, with all of the increasing anti-trans legislation, like, with people targeting trans adults now, like, the fact that, like, a beer company put a trans woman's face on it makes a dude pull out a gun and, like, start <laughs> shooting stuff. Right. Right. It's just like that's the level of like vitriol yeah. and like just unreasonable reactionary hate that we're down. dealing with. Yeah. And it's like it's like that's why that's why this Bud Light thing is interesting to me more than the fact that it's like it's still a Mulvaney or it's Bud Light. It's like, no, it's the the vi- vehement reaction people have had, like, is indicative, I think, not just of like people's ideas about trans people, but just about like the growing animosity towards like queer people in general you know like yeah i think everyone needs to calm down um and remember that our real enemy is the powers that be in terms of the corporations mostly and our politicians are obviously wasting everyone's time making bills about that there can't be drag shows that have where children are around if they're of a sexual nature like that's yeah. it's like okay like can we if nothing else realize this doesn't matter and that these people could be spending their time making the country a better place fixing fucking roads and bridges fixing roads and bridges or whatever they're supposed to be figuring doing. out the whole we don't food, need air water be situation spending all this time on moral arbitration <coughs> around local matters yeah Whatever else you think of it, like, that's not what they're supposed to be doing with their time. It's clearly a distraction. Yeah. So stop falling for it and getting all upset about a tiny thing. Like, there are people who are worried about those things and are, you know, and are trying to figure it out. But you having a reaction that's like, oh, I'm mad that Bud Light likes a trans person. Like, what? Yeah. At this point, people are looking gross. It's beyond childish. It's just gross. Yeah, but we've become the new focus of like the the right always needs a thing to throw mud at so it can distract you from what it's doing over here. You know, like that's just how they fucking function. Like it, whether it's abortion or gay marriage or the death penalty, you know, whatever they're right. There's always a thing. And like, we're the thing now. I think that if we can just come to a little bit more of a consensus about the sticking points for people, like for the people kind of in the middle, if you will, then everyone would be there and we wouldn't be in this place where people are like super upset about the Dylan Mulvaney thing. And I think we're starting to go that direction because I noticed Natalie Wynn on ContraPoints saying, I think sports are complicated. What I've been saying, different sports, it depends on the sport. It depends on the level. It depends on the situation. It is nuanced and it's complicated. Mm -hmm. And she says that. And so I'm like, thank you. Like, that's one of the things that I'm like, we all just want to have a, some of the, those people who care about sports just want to be able to have that conversation and not have these female tennis stars uh, lose their jobs or their whatever because they are having oh, questions. Now, some of them are being bitches about it. If they're being bitches about it, stop being a bitch. Like, J.K. Rowling needs to stop being a fucking bitch. Literally. The famous uh, runner, she's she's a cis woman, but you she's... You mean Pastor having... Semenya? What? You mean Pastor Semenya? Maybe. The one the one who's, like, uh, Her testosterone t- levels are really... Just naturally too high, and she well, has to, like, she's... suppress them. I can't remember that one. I think she might be but it's just like X Y, but she just presents. It's like has a vagina, but actually, like, actually did masculinize in basically the same way as a man. So it's one of those cases where you're like, yeah, it's not clear cut because we've been thinking of this person as a woman their whole life, and she identifies as a woman. But I but, think that makes her a woman. <laughs> well, but people, but when it comes to sports, the people who are 
nerdy and care about like hey getting this right which is people who care about sports and then you're like well but physically we're talking about what what's physically going on yeah i get that but i think like sports are held into like such a i've been suddenly talked about in this really sanctimonious or like s special way where it's like oh these they're these holy things but it's like the one thing i know about sports is that the the governing bodies of them are always fucked up like, I've never watched a sport and thought, like, even just as, like, a fan of sports and thought, like, man, the people who wrote these rules have made, like, great decisions. Like, all these rules make perfect sense and there's not any flaws in them, right? Mm -hmm. There's always, like, I love F1. And the worst thing about F1 is the FIA, the governing body of motorsport. They constantly fuck up and just make horrible decisions, like, that affect the race and the drivers and they're clumsy and then they backtrack on their decisions because people get angry at them. And you see it happen in like football with like reviews and things like that and challenges yeah. like the the rules and regulations, regulatory bodies in sports, like trying to regulate players in like mundane ways. Like like they tried to tell Lewis Hamilton he couldn't wear so much jewelry to press conferences. You know, the FIA did. He's a driver in F1. Right. Okay. And, but it's silly things like that. Like they talk about like they get in places they don't belong and like we try and act like sports are these like pure thing but really they're these oddly molded balls by these like governing bodies that don't make sense and make bad judgments anyways and so they're not really as fair and as even keeled as everyone thinks they are right like it's an incredibly skewed system to play a sport at a professional level and so i think like if somebody makes it there you fucking make it there right and like you should be allowed to stay like especially in like her case like to suppress your natural testosterone level right, so you can that's keep crazy running to, like, to make her do, i'm like but yeah. that's the thing it's like that's why it's hard to make these rules and that's why i'm against people making rules like this in general because one thing i know about sports leagues and the way they make rules is once you make a rule it becomes embedded in the sport and how you think about competition ingrained into the practice and it's incredibly hard to change so making quick judgments and like p imposing limits like this and making people change their bodies to compete like can have a really long lasting effect on the sport it may not end up being the best solution yeah but so i think like in the case of someone like castor semenya a lot of people then think well, if we had a third league or some multiple league situation, that would be a natural place for, for her to be. And so you're like, instead of us being like, let's change you, to be like, let's change the rules so that we have a way to accommodate for this. Because trans men who are taking testosterone don't get all the gains all the way up to being a cis man. And trans women who take est estrogen and testosterone blockers don't lose all of the muscle mass and, and all the other dynamics of their bodies that you get from male puberty. And so, like... Then you have the people like Castor Semenya. It's like, or you just have people who are um, cis women, but are really, really good, and strong and tall and whatever. And you have cis men who are maybe who are shorter or whatever. I mean, we could have, you know, you know what I mean? Slider, like we could have- <coughs> That sounds like the separate but equal league though. But I think it would be like a fun, that sounds... what was that league of the, like the superhero people that, um, the League of Misfits or some shit, no, essentially. No. Uh, you know, they Super were all friends. the ones that didn't actually fit Wasn't in, like, but we put them in a league together. Super friends. Super they, friends. We should all, they should be fine. Super friends. It's definitely not a third rate <laughs> franchise. It's not a third. It's, if anything, it's more entertaining. It's way more entertaining than the women's. Now, the women's ones, they can compete, but still no one will, no one will watch that. But some people are going to watch the middle one. Trans boys versus trans women and, and intersex people and shit. See, I'm what, watching that. What I think I'm not should... watching WNBA, and especially if we, you know, take if it's only <laughs> slight cis women or whatever. But if it's gay boys and lesbians versus trans men and trans women, and like all of those are playing each other in the intersex, people will watch this. I mean, it, people will watch anything. No, know, no one yes. watches women's sports. People yes, watch anything but women's sports. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, a few people do, but not enough. Yeah. I do like women's soccer. Who doesn't? Yeah. The they have good characters. But. Soccer and basketball, best women's sports. No, volleyball, number one, actually. I love Those volleyball. Thighs. Yeah, it's basically, it's all about the thought. No, I mean, I just love the sport, no. <laughs> honestly. I like sports where something's uh, something of consequence is happening each turn. Yeah. So there's true. always a point, you know, yeah. there's something, you know, it's like, that's why basketball and volleyball are really fun to watch. It's like, it's a They're constant, sports, like, yeah. yeah. 
true but, but I, I don't i don't know i think the opposite shocker where it's like i think we put everybody gets to play in a league right there should be one league and like <laughs> you get to put together the teams that you want and people just compete and everybody else can play in a separate league if you want to play based off sexes but i think the main league should be a fucking free for all Oh, yeah, sure. Okay, so there's a main league that's a free-for-all, and then there can be a separate league for people who are going, yeah, no, I want to opt out of that. That's what you're saying? Okay. And so just basically anyone can opt in to the female one then. No, no, no. I'm saying, like, I want to combine the NBA and the WNBA and, like, have, like, a free-for-all mix and match team. Maybe we set some guidelines on percentages of people oh, you have to have on your team. I was going to say, because otherwise it's just going to be men. Well, I know, but I'm just saying like, okay, you know, so we're going to we like, a, we do yeah. a 50, 50 thing. Yeah. It's Everybody's like kind of have... like you will come up with an algorithm. It'll generate and you have to like kind of p- piece your team together. Well, yeah. I mean, I've been joking and about how be... every WNBA team could get one trans chick on it. <laughs> just that's how it's fair. But actually, yeah. Why don't we just do 50, 50s? Anything with multiple people, you just do... But then I, I think that the injury thing becomes more of an issue. We figure it out. But that's what I'm saying. That's why, I mean, look, well, I don't actually want to do it. this, you know, I mean, I'm just spitballing here, but that's what I'm saying about like sport and the way it works is like, if we did that, that's probably not the best solution. And like, it's going to get ingrained in the sport and the way that people think about it and the way that the companies and <laughs> people in charge of this shit are thinking about it 15, 10 years down the line, right? Like uh-huh. how you're going to build your team, what you need to be looking at to do and to tweak, right? What regulations we need to be anticipating. That's why I'm just hesitant of like, <laughs> it feels like because trans people are such a hot cultural issue, everybody's now deciding to rush to pass the legislation or rules or judgment on them in a very like codified physical way mm-hmm. rather than like, I mean, having a fucking, even, even though I don't, I have my opinions and I don't think we should talk about it. I think the answers are pretty cut and clear and we should include everybody, but whatever. Like, even if we do want to talk about it, passing provisional rules right. is like dangerous because it becomes a thing that's on the books and a thing on the books is a lot harder to change yeah. than a conversation topic. Yeah, I really would like to convince people to stop making these laws I, and then i just i didn't realize how bad it was like i was watching some shit last night where i'm like seeing these republicans just talking about trans shit and they sound like fucking asshole morons yeah There's, it's just the worst kind of garbage tv like this is just like the reality tv of yeah of t- you know what's like, getting good to the God, point to where it's like you know like we i don't know we've been saying it since the beginning it's not just about trans kids it's not just about Oh, drag queens. It's like a more general. Let's talk about children. Let's talk about sports. Let's talk about women's prisons, whatever. And then and understand that the, if you don't, they're not going to be on your side. Um, and we need the people to understand that the Republicans are being asshole morons right now. Well, yeah, I mean, I think well, I think people need to realize that because a lot of people always say, like, I vote Republican because of, like, you know, my, the finances. I think about the economics, you know, that's really what it comes right. down to a lot of people for right. their back pocket. Right. And uh, but I think they need to realize that the the Republicans and with this bent that they're on, they're putting they're making you choose between your business and your family. They're making you choose between your money and your family, and your family's future. So it's like you got to think like you know what if your kid you have kids what if your kids have kids what kind of like world are you sending your kids into to like what if they are queer or trans or whatever the fuck like are they going to be fucking safe mm-hmm. like you know with the kind of like place you see around like do you like do people really think people can change still like i don't know i don't talk to anybody who thinks that you can still pray the gay away i don't think right i think most people just think that you know you are gay but that's bad right right and so it's like if you're functioning from that point and you have a kid or a grandkid that like that like you i guess you just believe that kid is bad and abandon them or you are you going to try and like make a better world for them to live in right and i think having to take that moral stance against people like they're going to have to vote with their morality and their kind of like voting for their family voting for the future of like 
the good of all people versus like what they perceive as good for their pocketbook, but in reality will never help them. Right. You know? Yeah. Well. I don't know. I also might just be high. Both parties suck, but these Republicans are really being dipshits about all the gender stuff. And you could also just call them if you are, you know, I mean, we could too. We should just call the Republican representatives and say, hey, like, I don't want you to do this. Like, and even, I think if you were someone- I think people do that a lot. I don't think it matters. Oh, I think, what if they were getting letters from more people who were like, hey, look, I share your concerns about these things, but I also know more trans people than you do. Let me tell you about so-and-so, whatever. I think that might get through. Because I don't think these, these people do want to get reelected. I don't, they don't, they want to keep the, I don't think that's, I don't think it's going to be a, it's not a thing of getting through to somebody. You're not getting through these. These are politicians, first off. They're not, they're not voting on their heart right now. They're mm -hmm. voting on getting reelected and what they perceive to be like the thing to do within that's the party. That's what I'm saying. If we wrote them actual letters. But that doesn't matter. Like what what would matter school? is if somebody calls them and you're in their district and you go, hey, I've been, you know, a Republican voter my whole right. life, and I, if you vote for this thing, you're not, you're losing my vote. Yeah. And not only are you losing my vote, whoever you're running against, I'm giving them money. Yeah. And I'm going to do what I can to make sure you're out of office. And like, if you're somebody who has a little bit of money, the money thing is the most important thing you can do. That's the yeah. biggest threat you could have is like, not only am I giving well, money to, like your, you to whatever to candidates to against it. you, Whatever, whatever, you know, political action committee is against you, they're getting some money as well, right? Like, mm -hmm. I'm going to make sure I'm funding, taking you down. I'm going to tell my friends about it. Right. That's the only thing you can do. Like, writing right. an impassioned letter <laughs> appealing to reason isn't going to accomplish anything. All right. It sounds good. But then we just do need to be calling our... Yeah. I mean, everyone should fucking call. Give them an earful. Yeah. All right. Well, let me put it in my calendar. So for the fetish of the week, uh, I don't know. I just heard about this. We don't ever give content warnings, but this is going on YouTube. Yeah. I don't know. There's like some Nazi shit in this. It's pretty gnarly. Um, it's called, um, not the consent condom. Uh, it's, yeah, that. We Stalag. scroll up. Yeah. Stalag. Stalag, Stalag. Stalag. fiction. Um, if you scroll to the bottom of those photos, there will be a link to the Wikipedia page. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's not. It didn't go through. Oh, oh fuck. I like his whip scars. Is it under that title? Yeah. And so essentially what it is, is like it's this genre of porn that was really popular in Israel post-World War II mm -hmm. that featured... Oh, yeah. Nazi exploitation Holocaust pornography in Israel that flourished in the 1950s and early oh, yeah. 1960s and stopped at the time of the Eichmann trial <laughs> due to the ban by the Israeli oh, government. Okay. These books were mainly about female German Nazi officers sexually abusing their male camp prisoners, yet they did not include any Jewish names to avoid taboos. Um, a lot of times it was like GIs in POW camps or yeah. at, I've, at one person said like there were some like of concentration camps maybe. But, like, um, essentially it was, oh, it usually, like, oh, yeah, we scroll down to the premise. Purported to be translations of camp. English language books by prisoners in concentration camps. These books were highly pornographic accounts of imprisonment, generally of allied soldiers sexualized, sexually brutalized uh, by the female SS guards, or in some cases by imperial Japanese women. <sighs> and the prisoners' eventual revenge, which usually consisted of the rape and murder of their tormentors. Wow. Uh, the books with titles like I Was Colonel Schultz's Private Bitch were especially popular among adolescent boys, often the culture of, uh, the children often of the children of concentration camp survivors. Oh, <laughs> that's amazing. So the children of Holocaust survivors were beating off to comic books of Nazi women Fucking, fucking and, and using and, and abusing allied soldiers. 
But that they would eventually get and free. Then, yes, eventually the Allied soldiers would and get murder free. Them. Would rape them murder them. I'm just, it's interesting that they don't put, I guess they don't want them or them, their parents in the, the fantasy. Instead, they're putting this all onto the, the Allied, Allied soldier. soldier. Yeah. That's an amazing, beautiful, gorgeous, like, group pr projection for just this one fantasy that they could all just kind of share. It's pretty wild. That's so cool. The history of it's crazy. Groups of Israeli uh, publishers began to publish dime novel format memoirs describing abuse, particularly <sighs> sexual abuse, in concentration camps. Sold in magazine kiosks, the novels, ostensibly first-person memoirs, became bestsellers. Oh, my God. According to filmmaker Ari Libsker, yeah. uh, the Holocaust pictures that I saw as the ones who grew up here were naked women. Uh, they disappeared almost as quickly as they appeared within two years of the appearance of the first publication the publishers were accused uh, uh by an israeli court of distributing pornography and the books were discontinued although still un available underground certain titles earned the ire of the establishment and efforts were made to find and destroy them uh, the advent of the internet has allowed peer-to-peer -peer file sharing and so like yeah it's Shit's been. So they were actually documenting real sexual abuse from the Holocaust. Um, wait, scroll back. It sounds uh, like, no. yeah, they said the memoirs, novel format memoirs <clears throat> describing abuse in the concentration oh, yeah. camps. And that, that just became bestsellers. Whoa. Dude, that's the thing. It's like the way we process trauma can be really crazy. And so they wanted to read other people's... I mean, it is a wild redirection <sighs> of yeah. like one of the most traumatic like cultural events in history yeah like to then be like well, let's jerk off to it yeah That's i mean if they people talk about you can't write a joke about something it's like we have to just so like we have to jerk off about it I'm like yeah but you can't write a joke about it you can jerk off to it i bet yeah. you can write a joke about yeah. it yeah <laughs> <laughs> jesus christ can you imagine though if you're reading one of the books and then but it's some you know because it's the 50s and 60s so you're passing it to your friends, right? You know, I don't know if you ever shared yeah. porn. You were Mormon, probably not. We just showed each other the internet. No, but I mean like physical. Co so like I had I like, so. we didn't have good internet and in Bonham. And so like I had a friend who only visited in the summers and came across the street. But when he visited, he brought like torn out pieces of a magazine and he let me borrow them for like a summer. Nice. And I got to like fucking jerk off of these. And I was like, oh, this is fucking great. <laughs> I'd only been masturbating to like the Hooters, like the four Hooters playing cards my friend had given me, uh, you know? And so like, um, or like where I could freeze frame things in like a movie, like when my parents weren't up or something. Just like, dude, it's all in my mind. And, I mean, I did that too, but I'm saying like, it was cool to see a thing, yeah. right? It's like, you know, it was a novelty at that point, right? Yeah. Um, and so, but like it's 50s and 60s, they're passing it to their friends. People yeah. are reading it. Like if you're into a bar, but you're reading it and it's been a beaten copy. And so the rape and murder parts torn out. So you're just fucking jerking off. And it's just <laughs> the brutalization and sexual assault. And you're like, yeah. no, no, I need the good. I need the part at the end that makes this all <laughs> feel better. Not yeah. the, I need the catharsis of the, yeah. that has to be part the of the revenge it, right? catharsis. Yeah. I mean, I mean, there might be someone who doesn't like, I don't like it when they do the rape murder at the end. I just am into the allied soldier. Yeah. You know, getting assaulted. Possibly. But they didn't mention it on here, so maybe that was a large contingent. Um, Not I think my I would thing. Want, I mean, I, I, I cannot put myself in the shoes of anyone involved in this to <laughs> really no. have any idea how I would feel about which th parts I wanted to masturbate about. No, yeah. um, this is completely out of our like yeah. out of our wheelhouse. This is not for well, it's just us. out of our depth. I mean, it's way out of our depth. Like that's just like you can't you can't empathize with that. But that's but I, you know, I don't know. It, it, it's so interesting to think about the Israeli government. Like, so I guess they, yeah, they're they're like, hey, it's pornography. Like, it, no pornography is allowed there. I guess it wasn't. Or it wasn't then. I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't seem unreasonable for Israel in the 50s and 60s yeah. or America in the 50s and yeah, 60s, true. right? Like, yeah. I mean, there was pornography, but yeah, like, these are just, I just Google image search some and found some. Yeah, but it's always like, yeah, hot. I mean, the art is wonderful. Yeah, it's good. Like, it's really pretty great cover art. Nazis fucking Americans. 
and English people. I mean, I'd probably be into that, you know. What do you mean? Like, if I'd you probably were, be into that, yeah. But if you you're know. a Jewish young Jewish man in the 1960s, 1950s. Well, also just in general, like right now, I'm like, <laughs> well, it, it's just like a woman like raping a man and then he killed. I don't, you know, like I don't know. I'm just not into like. I just don't have a role that I fit into in these because it's like I don't. Like, if somebody's, like, yeah. captured me and is, like, brutalized me, I don't have, like, a, I want to break out Side of it, rate. like, part of it. I'm okay. just happy being trapped and captured. And if yeah, I'm the one, like, point. you know, have captured and I'm, like, hitting somebody and, like, fucking them, I don't really want to be, I mean, I'm down for them to break free and, like, rape me, but then I don't want to be murdered. Yeah, you're right. I don't think I would be into those. But what about the ones where it's just people's memoirs? No. Probably be too much. I can't I can't even read like I mean this is hard talk enough to talk about trauma. I almost <laughs> didn't bring this. I was like yeah. cuz like it just it makes me want to cry just yeah. thinking about shit like that and like you know, and so like reading someone's actual fucking memoirs like like but I'm they're too, writing it as I'm, erotica. I know, but I'm too distant from it. Yeah. I, if I was there in the time, I think I would have probably been into it. Yeah. But at this point, like with like the historical yeah. perspective, Might not it be just able to makes get into it, it. It's not a thing I can I can't right. get down on. But it's wild to think of the people who, yeah. who were in that headspace and then enjoyed that. Well, like, when I saw it, I thought for sure I was like, this has to be some sort of little niche thing that it's going to be hard for me to find anything about. And I was like, oh, there's a fucking Wikipedia page about this. Mm -hmm. This isn't like some weird like thing I'm dredging up from like some Tumblr blog or forum that I've been on. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, there's probably academic papers and shit written about this. Yeah. And like, you know, so I was like, okay, I'll bring it Sorry. now. But like still, I was like, damn. That's funny. Well, yeah. And plus the German accent would ruin it for me. So, <laughs> you know, I would just hear that in my head. Yeah. You don't do well with those. I don't like most of the mm -hmm. kind of. I don't even know what it, Germany is like in the middle. I like, yeah, I don't really like Eastern the, or it's middle. Yeah. Yeah. I like Dutch. Hmm. And I'm part Dutch and I'm part <laughs> German and I'm part, I probably have a little Eastern European, you know. And got any German in you? Yeah. Would you like it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have to pee really bad. Okay.